Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another Friday with the family. I'm your host, Julia Bimbrek. Um, a huge thank you again to the Alumni Association for putting this on. It is always a fun time, great way to celebrate Orange Friday. And today we have a very special guest. She is the Assistant Dean of Diversity at the OSU Center for Health Sciences. Please welcome Brenda Davidson. Brenda, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. I am so happy to be a part of this great day. I'm just super excited and glad to be here. And you are coming to us from Tulsa, correct? So, Absolutely, yes. And so getting a lot of snow there as well. Um, but we just, before we get started, I do want to remind all of the people uh, watching that you can submit <laughs> questions. You can put comments in the Facebook posting, or you can use our ALC webinar service and put a comment there as well. So I know you'll have questions for Brenda as we go. <laughs> but to start us off, Brenda, tell me just a little bit of your background. Where'd you grow up? How'd you find your way to the OSU community and, and what you're doing now? Absolutely. I am Brenda Davidson and I was born in Muskogee, Oklahoma. I attended and graduated from Muskogee High School home of the mighty powerful roughers. I have five siblings. I've been married for 35 years. I have two children and I have one grandchild. I am the assistant dean of diversity at OSU Center for Health Sciences. And I began this new role on October 1st, 2020. And so you started the, this new role then, but you've, you've been within the OSU community working there um, for a long time. Tell me a little bit about that background. Happy to do that. I've been with OSU Center for Health Sciences, OSU Medical Center, almost 40 years, May 31st to be exactly. I'll complete 40 years of service with the entire osteopathic family being involved in the residency programs as the associate DIO, which is the associate institutional official, has given me the opportunity to take some of those experience and place them toward this new role, the assistant dean of diversity. And so you have seen so much in your time at OSU, even back to <laughs> attending. Um, and, and I know that a lot of your friends are actually watching. They got the Alumni Association emails they're watching today. Tell me a little bit about your time in school and, and what that was like. Time in school was wonderful. We were had such a great time as far as growing up. Um, in Muskogee High School, we had great um, relationships with individual backgrounds. We had great relationships with the instructors and we grew up really as a happy family and all the students at Muskogee High School, it was really family oriented. And I'm very grateful for the upbringing that I had with the Muskogee High School family. It was very exciting and rewarding. And then your role there in the Office of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, this is a very important month, Black History Month. Tell me about that month what it means, and then also some of the origin of that celebration. Well, honestly, what Black History Month means to me is what African Americans was able to endure, such as overcoming obstacles, standing up for their rights, to make a change in the world, and most of all, achieving their goals and accomplishments. The origin of this celebration in the United States began years ago as a way of remembering important people and events in the history of African-Americans. Black History Month started as a week long celebration called Negro History Week with numerous schools and communities and organizations, groups across the United States that organized events and activities to recognize and promote the achievements of Black Americans. I One thing I, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. One thing I've also learned and is my walk in life, Black History Month coincides with the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln, our 16th president of the United States, as well as Frederick Douglass, one of the slaves um, who escaped from slavery. 
And one thing that Frederick Douglass wanted to do, he wanted to end the practice of slavery before and of course during the Civil War. One of his dreams was that this country would live up to becoming a true multiracial democracy. And very grateful that in 1976, President Ford officially recognized Black History Month, calling it a moment for the public to actually honor the accomplishments of Black Americans. And we talked a little bit offline, but before we were on here about some of the, the residency programs and things you wanted to highlight that were going on there at OSU Center for Health Sciences. Would you wanna talk about that a little bit now? Yes, absolutely. OSU Center for Health Sciences, it wants to promote and continue to promote um, diverse backgrounds, experience of individuals who are seeking to become physicians, College of Medicine students, as well as graduate students, athletic training students, PA students. We are enhancing our programs, not only in the residency programs, as well as the fellowship programs, but ensure that the state of Oklahoma can continue to grow physicians in rural areas such as Tahlequah, of course, Tallahena, Durant, McAllister, Lawton. We have over 400 residency positions in the state of Oklahoma and we're continuing to grow. This allows patients who are in Oklahoma to continue to get the best care by physicians being trained by the best physicians as far as the faculty and directors here at OSU Center for Health Sciences. And going back in kind of the history of OSU, um, OSU and Langston University both operate under the Board of Regents for Oklahoma Agriculture and Mechanical Colleges. Correct. What was the reason at the time for these two separate A&M schools? Well, way back in 1890, the second Morrill Act required states or territories with land grant colleges either to admit African-Americans or to provide an alternate school for them in order to qualify for, for federal funds. Since OSU would not admit African-Americans as far as admit them, admit them as students at the time, then of course there were three citizens of Langston, Oklahoma who petitioned the territorial council to establish a university in their own town, of course. In this, the colored agricultural and Normal University was founded in 1897 and later became Langston University. It was discussion that there was a conflict in higher education in Tulsa stretching back more than 40 years. And combining these two A&M schools closed a complaint by the individual people in the Alumni Association of Langston. And in this, with OSU and Langston operating under the Board of Regents enabled both OSU and Langston to pursue their strategic objectives to further higher education. And then Nancy Randolph Davis was the first black person to attend OSU. I know we have a, a fairly recent statue of her up on campus. Tell me a little bit about her backstory and what, what changes had to take place to give her the opportunity to attend. Nancy Randolph Davis, she paved the way for other Black students to enter and attend OSU. She was a person of perseverance and determination. She started her master's degree in economics in 1949. And one thing I've gained and learned about her was she was not trying to make history. She only wanted to enroll at OSU, just trying to simply further her education. Some of the changes that followed, she was able to cross racial barriers. She stayed on course and made the pathway for others to enter Oklahoma State University. She stayed true to herself as an individual. And she also shared that African-Americans, anyone do not have to compromise who they are as a person or an individual. 
And there were there were lots of others that that also broke barriers there at OSU. Can you tell us a little bit about some of those other firsts, those first moments um, within that community? Absolutely. Elsie Gordon, he was one of the first, actually he was the, the first black basketball player on the OSU team. And he earned a Bachelor of Science in secondary education. He graduated in 1961. There's Earl Mitchell was the first black professor at OSU. He received his PhD in biochemistry from Michigan State University in 1966. And of course, Patrice Latimer, a Tulsa native, was the first African-American president of OSU Student of Government Association. And after graduating from OSU, she also earned a legal degree and she practiced in Oklahoma and Washington, DC. And of course, Chester Pittman, the first African-American football player. And he began as a freshman in 1957 and he was a starting running back as a sophomore. And he passed away at the age of 83. And tell me a little bit about what your experience was like on OSU's campus and how you think things have changed um, to this point today here in 2021. Well, my experience on campus then is, was that all the African-American students pretty much stayed in the same dorms and housing units. It wasn't diverse as it exists today. African-Americans stayed in their own groups on campus, of course, with their own backgrounds as far as experiences and cultures, of course. But this is different today. This has become quite diverse as far as, you know, dorms and different activities and students working together as a family and in unison. So it has definitely changed. And you know, in your role specifically too, what are some things that we as a campus community can still continue to work on and, and do to make a more inclusive environment? What we continue to do is to make sure that we embrace other races, their backgrounds, their experiences, understand that everyone is included in this great human race. Everyone's are human beings. And that's the way everyone should be treated, the way you want to be treated. Absolutely. We do have some questions coming in for you as well. Um, so I'll get to some of those right now. Um, kind, of, kind of similar, I guess, to my last question. What are some initiatives that OSU CHS has to increase diversity? Well, one of the great things that has happened here in an effective October 1st, 2020, we have the Office of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion that was established. We also have a diversity, equity, and inclusion committee. We embrace students. We embrace their faith, their backgrounds. We work together as a family, and we don't take that word for granted. We want to ensure that the students feel at home. We have um, two ears to listen to what they're saying. And we want to make sure that when they come inside the doors of OSU Center for Health Sciences, Oklahoma State University, any OSU facility, we want them to ensure that they feel welcomed and they feel that OSU Center for Health Sciences, Oklahoma State University as a whole, they feel welcomed. And this one um, comes from one of our viewers today as well. They say, if I have, a, I have a high school student interested in the OSU medicine program, how can they get more information about that program? Where's the best place to go to look for that? You can contact me, brenda.davidson at okstate.edu. And we have different programs that we have for students who are interested in the OSU programs here at Oklahoma State University Center for Health Sciences. Awesome. There you go, the di direct link for our viewers and how to contact you. Absolutely. Um, and if you have, oh, there it is on the screen if you need it now to mark that <laughs> down. And you can continue to ask more questions on the Facebook stream. And also if you're watching on the ALC webinar, you can put that in the ask the question <laughs> button there as well. But yeah. I have a 
for myself. So um, with Black History Month, what are OSU campuses doing to celebrate that? Numerous events are scheduled to honor Black History Month at Oklahoma State University. Of course, there was the Nancy Randolph Davis Day and the Office of Multicultural Affairs putting on programs. Miss Black OSU scholarship pageant, of course, on Saturday, February 27th, as well as other student organizations and campus activities. So with like you mentioned, Miss Black OSU coming up, is that something people can watch from home or are they having it in person? How is that working in the, in the pandemic? I will um, need to reach out to Oklahoma State University Stillwater to get the exact um, finalities of that. And I'm happy to do that. Awesome. Yeah. And people, I'm sure they can find it on um, the website as well, but of course, they, they normally do a good job of live streaming those. So that's great. Especially Absolutely. But yes, they do. Far away. So that's perfect. Um, and then what are some resources that are available to learn more about black history at OSU in Oklahoma, just in the United States in general? Do you have recommendations for people who are wanting to learn and, and wanting to grow in that area? <laughs> Yes, of course, we have the Tulsa Historical and Museum, the Greenwood Cultural Center, Tulsa, and there's the Bowley Historical Museum, and of course, Oklahoma City's Black Museum and Performing Arts Center, and the National Museum of African American History and Culture, located on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. Phenomenal. And then, okay, we've got a few more questions coming <laughs> Here from audience members, keeping me on my toes today. Um, how have things changed for CHS during the pandemic? I'm sure that's a loaded question. There's probably quite a bit. Well, I can share with you that we have a great team of physicians. We have a great administrative staff, Dr. Shrum and her team. Um, they have been totally supporting the pandemic as far as making sure the patients are safe, the staff is safe. They've given countless numbers of hours toward ensuring that the state of Oklahoma is safe. They've done their research. Oklahoma Center for Health Science has worked together as a family, a community, as a state, and to ensure that everyone has the resources needed to support the areas of COVID-19. Lots of things changing right now, for Absolutely. sure. Yes. And I know that that campus, the CHS campus has done so much to lead the state in, in numerous ways, testing, all sorts of things. I feel like I'm, I'm constantly seeing something that you all are doing there. Absolutely, yes. And then one of my, one of my favorite um, questions to ask anybody in the o o OSU community is, what does it mean to you to be a part of the Cowboy family? What What's your definition of that? Being part of the Cowboy family is being part of a personal family, like an intimate family, your personal family. Everyone treats everyone as if they're family. And I use that family because it's definitely true. We support one another. We support the students, the faculty. We're here for them in any way possible. We wanna make sure that every single student that comes to this campus, every single faculty member are treated with the must most respect and given the must, the utmost um, care in any area that they're seeking. So yes, we're definitely a family and a community here at OSU Center for Health Sciences. And it's, it's absolute truth, we're a family. <laughs> and, and then you have actual family members spread all throughout the Cowboy family as well. Tell, tell us a little bit about those background stories and kind of how some of your family members are involved in different parts of campus. Absolutely. I'm happy to do this. I've been married for 30, I'm sorry, 35 years. And I actually met, it met my husband on campus in the early 80s. We weren't married then, but been married for 35 years. And Kenneth Murray, he is the individual um, barber, African-American barber that's been at OSU Stillwater for years. I'm not sure how many, but over 35 to 40 years. My sister-in-law, Karen Washington, she worked there for many years in the, ag in the agricultural area, I believe, 
with human resources in Stillwater, um, family to the utmost. The, my, my husband's grandparents were pioneers of Stillwater. So it's like a great big family. It's embracing and it's just good to know that you have families in the whole state of Oklahoma and whenever you go to sit down or lay your head, you feel like you're at home. And yes, indeed, family is so important. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time and giving us some background and also some resources uh, to continue to learn. Is there anything else you want to share today, either about your personal journey or Black History Month or OSU in general? I know we covered a lot of topics here. Yes, one thing that I would like to share, and it means so much to me as an individual, is to always show kindness to others. That, that is really important. And OSU CHS embraces that, this trait. As a family, as a community, as a city, as a state, as a country, and as a world, we are to always respect people of races, of the races and faiths. Regardless of our differences, we are all human, unique human beings. Everyone working together to make the world a better and safe place. This great, this great, beautiful melting pot. And one thing I'd also like to share is that we're all from different cloths, different patterns, but the beauty of it is we can all be a part of this great, massive, big piece of fabric and allow peace, unity, and the opportunity for all. We may have different religious backgrounds, different languages, different colored skin, but once again, we all belong to one human race. Everyone, everyone should be able to reach their highest potential. We need to continue to understand and teach that difference is normal. It's ordinary. Why? Because differences is the reality of our world, this universe. Teaching about differences and learning from others. They're not from the same culture or the same background. Teaches us the greatness of what this wonderful world has to offer and the understanding and the embracing of others in once again, this great, beautiful, massive melting pot. <laughs> I think that is the perfect way to end. That's a, a perfect <laughs> message for us right now. Um, and I do have a few messages to send us <laughs> off with. Um, our next Friday with the family will be March 19th. That's with Steve Dobb, who serves as the Director of Landscape Services at OSU. You can see him there on screen. He's talking about campus beautification and how they work to keep some of your favorite spots on campus looking great. You'll be able to register soon at orangeconnection.org slash webinars, where you can also view all of our previous broadcasts along with other educational videos. A few things coming up in athletics for us here at OSU. Senior day for Cowgirl basketball is tomorrow at 1 p.m. in gallagher -Iba Arena. The Cowgirls will be taking on Iowa State. Cowgirl tennis will host Central Arkansas and Missouri State tomorrow. Bedlam wrestling will happen in Stillwater on Sunday at 5 p.m. That's sure to be a good time. And then now is a great time to log on to your new profile online at orangeconnection.org to claim your life membership credit and secure your member benefits for life. All of that information is there on screen. Membership also helps the Alumni Association connect Cowboys virtually through programming like Fridays with the Family. Thank you again so much for joining us, Brenda. Really appreciate it. And thank you to everybody who watched and sent in questions. We appreciate your time as well. We'll see you back here on March 19th. As always, stay, safe, stay healthy, and Brenda and I will do this together. <laughs> <laughs>